Hi guys, Rachel Cook, Doctor of Audiology at Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona, and in today's video, I'll be explaining why audiologic best practices can make or break your hearing aid treatment success. Coming up. If you've been following this channel for a while now, then you've probably heard the term best practices more than a few times. But why is that? Well, because when it comes to having success with hearing aids, best practices are the only way to ensure that you will hear your absolute best. Essentially, best practices are a series of considerations and procedures that have been proven by research to result in optimal treatment outcomes. Many industries actually have their own set of best practice guidelines. Let's consider a best practice for surgeons. Before a surgery, doctors have to scrub in, washing their hands in a very particular way for a specific length of time, even though they plan to put gloves on. This is because research found that proper hand washing significantly reduced the transfer of bacteria, which led to lower rates of infection. There are now published guidelines for hand washing best practices developed from research outcomes that proved the greatest success. In the world of hearing treatment, there are also best practice guidelines. These should be followed in order to ensure that your hearing aids have been programmed to provide the maximum amount of benefit possible. One of these best practices that you may have heard of is something called real ear measurement. However, real ear measurement is only one component of a laundry list of procedures that make up comprehensive best practice care. Today, I plan to give a general overview of each of these best practice guidelines so that you have a better understanding of what your provider should be doing to ensure you get the most benefit out of hearing treatment. But before I do that, if you could please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps bring videos like these to a wider audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet already, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button with notification bell so that you never miss any one of our newly released videos. We really appreciate it. Now let's jump in. The American Academy of Audiology formed a task force with some of the most respected researchers and audiologists to develop best practice guidelines for the audiologic management of adult hearing impairment. These guidelines use evidence-based recommendations in four separate areas, assessment and goal setting, technical aspects of treatment, orientation, counseling, and follow-up, and assessing outcomes. Let's start by discussing assessment and goal setting. Before hearing treatment can begin, we have to understand your hearing loss and identify your wants and needs when it comes to your hearing. This begins with a comprehensive hearing evaluation that should include a full case history, otoscopy, which is when the provider looks in your ears, earwax removal, if necessary, and follow things up by a hearing test. This comprehensive hearing evaluation will yield a diagnosis of the type and severity of your hearing loss and a potential referral to a physician if there are any red flags. Now, the results of this assessment should be reviewed with you in detail before hearing treatment options are discussed. A needs assessment allows your hearing healthcare professional to keep your goals at the very front of their mind when it comes to determining which devices would be best for you. Goal setting in the beginning plays a very large role in evaluating your outcomes later down the road. This allows your provider to make certain that you are hearing the things that are most important to you. The second area of the best practice guidelines is the technical aspects of treatment. This encompasses hearing aid selection, quality control, fitting and verification, and consideration of hearing assistive technology. There are a ton of criteria when it comes to hearing aid selection. This includes what style of hearing aid you need for your hearing loss, whether you need one hearing aid or two, and what features these hearing aids contain. Hearing aid selection should be very, very personalized and should never really be a one-size-fits-all solution. Now, once you and your hearing care provider have precisely identified the ideal hearing aids for you, these hearing aids need to be run through a series of tests called test box measures before your hearing aid fitting can take place. During these procedures, the hearing aids are evaluated in a hearing instrument test box to see if they are meeting manufacturer specifications before you're fit with them. This quality control measure is also important when it comes to assessing your devices, if you suspect a malfunction, or if your hearing performance unexpectedly declines. Following quality control, you have fitting and verification. Fitting includes the actual physical fit of the hearing aids in your ears, whether it's custom fit, or using a combination of different receiver powers and lengths, dome sizes, 
and retention tails. Verifying the physical fit of the device is not only critical from an acoustic standpoint, but also from a comfort standpoint, because if the devices are not comfortable for you to wear, you're probably not gonna wear them very often. After the fit of the device is satisfactory, the next step is verification. One form of verification is real ear measurement that can be used to verify that your hearing aids have been programmed to meet your hearing loss prescription. This is a critical component to ensuring that your hearing aids are programmed correctly, and you can learn more about this procedure in depth in this video here that I will have linked in the description below. Other forms of verification include speech testing in quiet and in noise, both with and without your hearing aids, to analyze performance. But perhaps the most overlooked technical aspect of hearing treatment is the consideration of hearing assistive technology. Hearing aids alone can only work so well in some of the most challenging listening environments, like crowded restaurants, noisy conference centers, and full churches and theaters. Some tests, called speech and noise tests, performed during your initial hearing assessment can determine whether or not hearing assistive technology will be necessary to hear successfully in complex listening situations where hearing aids alone are not enough. Many times there are accessory devices that you can use with your hearing aids to have you hearing much better, and these should be discussed with you to see where you could get some extra benefit. The third area of best practice care is the orientation, counseling, and follow-up that begins during your initial hearing aid fitting. Your hearing aid orientation can make or break your initial hearing aid experience. For this reason, it is essential that your provider take the time to review everything that you would need to know to be successful with hearing treatment over those first few days or weeks after your initial fitting. This includes how to put your devices on and in your ears, how to make volume adjustments, and how to change or recharge your hearing aid battery. After your orientation, counseling and follow-up care is extremely critical to your long-term success with hearing treatment. This is because there are ongoing elements to successful hearing aid use. This includes things like cleaning and maintenance, troubleshooting and repairs, as well as updated hearing evaluations and hearing aid reprogramming. And finally, the fourth area of best practice audiologic care is the outcome assessment. While real ear measures are a form of verification, outcome assessments are considered validation measures. These include validated outcome questionnaires, such as the Hearing Handicap Inventory for Adults, or the HHIA, the Client Oriented Scale of Improvement, or the COSI, and the Abbreviated Profile of Hearing Aid Benefit, otherwise known as AFAB. These assessments are used to determine if you are actually subjectively receiving the benefit from hearing treatment that you were looking for. Having a hearing care professional who follows comprehensive best practices means that you will receive the maximum amount of benefit out of your hearing aid treatment. But estimates suggest that actually very few hearing healthcare providers actually follow comprehensive best practice guidelines. And that means it can be pretty tricky to find one that does. This is why Dr. Cliff Olson created the Hearing Up Provider Network. For a list of hearing up providers near you, be sure to head over to hearingup.com and click on the Find a Provider tab. Every single provider in the network has been personally vetted and is committed to following comprehensive audiologic best practices to ensure that you can hear your absolute best with your hearing aids. Overall, comprehensive best practices are considerably more important than just finding the best hearing aids. In fact, they are the only way to ensure that every last effort has been made to give you success with hearing treatment. By finding a provider who follows these best practice guidelines, I have no doubt that you'll be hearing your absolute best with your hearing aids.